Moving on. So number four is the Lucky 13 attack. And the Lucky 13 was a new attack against the transport layer security and datagram transport layer security that allows man-in-the-middle attackers to recover plain text, same TLS or DTLS connection, when cipher block chaining mode encryption is used. And it's important to note that this attack arose from a flaw in the TLS specification and not necessarily a flaw in its implementation. So with this research is Professor Kenny Patterson and Nadem Alfardin, whom both had previous experience in analysis of secure network protocols, including IPsec, SSH, SSH TLS, and DTLS. And these two also played a part in the previous RC4 weaknesses that Matt just discussed. Attacks applied to all TLS and DTLS implementations that are compliant with TLS 1.1 or 1.2, or DTLS 1.0 or 1.2, and they also apply to implementations of SSL 3.0 and TLS 1.0 that incorporate countermeasures to pass padding oracle attacks. There are some implementations of TLS and DTLS that are non-compliant, and all the researchers state that variations of these attacks may apply to those as well. Now, all TLS and DTLS cipher seats, which include cipher block chaining mode encryption, are potentially vulnerable to the Lucky 13 attacks. They have tested the attack against OpenSSL and GNU TLS. Now, for OpenSSL, a full plain text recovery attack is possible. For GNU TLS, a partial plain text attack recovery is possible. And they were able to recover up to four bits of the last byte of any block of plain text. Now, it abuses something that's known as a padding oracle attack, which we've mentioned a couple times so far. A padding oracle attack is a cryptographic side channel attack that is performed on the padding of a crypto message. Now, plain text messages often have to be padded for encryption, and the padding attack works against the portion of TLS that performs encryption and ensures the honesty and integrity of data. To understand this, we have to know a hash-based message authentication code, or HMAC, to work. A TLS typically uses HMAC with either SHA-1, MD5, or SHA-256 as the hash function. They share similarity in that each one processes messages in blocks of 64 bytes. Now, if you go from a 64-byte input to a 65-byte input, that means an entire block and an increasing amount of time required to compute an additional iteration will have to occur for whichever HMAC hash function is in place, either SHA-1, MD5, or SHA-256, with a few subtleties. The hash functions incorporate an 8-byte length field plus some special hash function padding, which actually means a one-block message can only contain about 55 bytes of real data. If you go a single byte above that, and the hash function will have to run a whole extra round, causing a tiny but measurable delay. Now, we have to do this multiple times. 2 times 10 to the 23rd, in fact, so just over 8 million times. And remember, this is a bit theoretical. It's not too practical to the real world because the same stuff needs to be sent unchanged that many times. The attacks involve in detecting small differences in the time, so it's a timing attack where there's purposely messing with data as it's traveling by, in which TLS error messages are returned on the network in response to attacker-generated ciphertext. So they measure how long it takes to have an acknowledgement of the packet that they broke, and then they're detecting slight differences in the times to respond, depending on the way it's broken. Now, these samples are also going to contain jitter, and that's why over 8 million samples are needed. Statistical analysis can then be used to filter out what would be native jitter to the network, and in the simplest form, after 2 times 10 to the 23rd identical TLS sessions that sent the same packet, only 16 bytes of encrypted plain text can be recovered. Now, that's not a lot of data for an arbitrarily large number of matching TLS sessions, matching being the key point. So although this is a theoretical attack on TLS, it's slightly more practical for datagram TLS or DTLS, because any time a record fails to decrypt due to a bad MAC or padding error, the TLS server will kill the session. Datagram TLS doesn't do this, so it makes a bit more sense to target DTLS. Now, is there a cause for concern? Well, yes and no. No in the sense that when this was discovered, the researchers obviously contacted vendors and let them know about the flaw so that it could be remediated prior to the research being released. Then again, they also warned that it is a truism that attacks only get better with time, and we cannot anticipate what improvements to our attacks or entirely new attacks may yet to be discovered. So if something like this or the RC4 weakness is expanded upon, then we would absolutely have something to worry about because of TLS's widespread use, and more importantly, the faith that we place in it upholding. So it's great that this was discovered and fixed, yet we should absolutely be cautious about any improvements to this attack that may move it out of the theoretical realm and into being actively exploited.